All right, guys, welcome to our May 18th team call. We are on part four of the social media series, and I changed it up last minute because I think that the number one thing that really helps grow your business is actually talking to people versus like actually, you know, expanding your network at first. And I know we're having this um, summer strong sale coming up this weekend, and I really wanted to use this call as like a helpful, like, you know, way for you to approach inviting to that. Um, but it's also something that can be used for inviting to any challenge groups or your team. It just depends on kind of what you're posting about. So I'll dive into that in a second. Um, just a couple of announcements real quick. One is obviously the Mixberry Energize launch today. I finally saw that some of the recover um, options are available to add to like performance packs. Um, it's only, <clears throat> I think, the orange tubs and then the chocolate packets. So if you have somebody who wants to do a performance pack, they're somewhat limited on what they can do right now. I think next week you should see more stock available as some of these shipping delays get better. Um, the Summer Strong Sale will be this weekend. I think what we're going to do is open it on, it's open now, so you can add people to it, but open up the sale on Friday and post all of our offers on Friday and then do drawings, no gift cards because everything's on sale already. So it's kind of silly to add extra gift cards on um, and do some sort of drawing system to where like people who sign up Friday can go into a drawing for, I have an extra three day refresh. I was thinking I could do it for a three day refresh. And if they sign up as a coach, they can get three entries towards the three day refresh. If they sign up as a customer, it would be one. Um, then day two, what we could do is leave the offers open and do like a tub of Energize. And then day three, we could do like a tub of Hydrate. I think collectively, Stacey and I were chatting earlier, and we have a few different things we can do. And then the sale and Sunday night. I know it's Memorial Day weekend. I know certain people will be unplugged. But I would just use it as an opportunity to invite as many people as you can. And I'll share about this a little bit as we go. Um, and then like, you know, doesn't really require a lot of work to get them into the sale. And once they get into the sale, we can really share about everything else that we have. So it's a good opportunity, especially for newer coaches to just like invite people with no strings attached saying, Hey, we're going to share this, like, you know, these offers, do you want to join? And then adding them into the group. I often like to invite by sending a link to the group too. So I'll share a little bit about that as we go. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. And oh, there's Molly. Um, I did another little presentation for this week again, and I'll, I'll post it in the team page. But tonight is all about connecting and inviting from social media. And honestly, like, you know, on your success club tracker, inviting is the part that really is where you're going to see your money, like your income coming in. And I think using social media for your platform or like your even guideline for how to invite or who to invite is the easiest way to do things. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some strategies with it um, and hopefully help you get a little more comfortable with inviting people to join you. Um, I know this is the scariest part, but really, like we talked about before, the goal of posting is engagement, which means you have to interact with your followers and people responding to your posts or watching your stories. People are on social media to be social, so you have to be social, like you have to talk to them. <laughs> on social media, um, you know how we talked about last week, you can either be on it or using it. Um, if you're just on social media, you're just posting and you're not interacting with people. You don't really care. You just are kind of like using it as your platform to showcase yourself. If you're actually using social media, you're posting consistently, you're interacting with people that are responding to your posts and you're building genuine relationships with those people that are following along with your stories or following along with your posts. Um, and you know, you're showing love to other people too. Like if you connect with people that are kind of in your like dream team or, you know, kind of ideal network. And when we talk about growing your network for the next call, we'll talk a little more about that. But tonight I want to be like really strategic with you guys and just say like, here's some ways you can use what's going on on your page right now to grow your business. So now that you've been posting regularly and posting on your page and in your stories, like we've already talked about what's next. Step one is start connecting with people. Step two is make sure you're responding to every comment on your posts. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but like people engaging with you deserve to be responded to. Um, number three is starting conversations with all poll responders, question responders, meter, meter answers, like all those little things you can use in stories to increase um, 
you know, engagement and communication with people, you need to be talking to those people. And then number four is starting conversations with all story viewers and post likers. And this is where people get super uncomfortable, but I can tell you guys, there's some really easy ways to do it that don't feel icky or weird. Like you really are starting conversation with these people because you want to know like, what is it about my life that interests these people and vice versa. So number one that I just talked about was starting conversations with all poll responders question responders, meter answers, et cetera. So these features are on Instagram and Facebook as conversation starters. So you have to use them to start conversations. Now, the exception to this I put is you might see these days, especially fake accounts responding to you, or like I've noticed some accounts that have like 30,000 followers. The person is like an NBC correspondent or someone famous already. Like they, they must have some sort of service working for them that's responding to your poll as like a bot, et cetera, I wouldn't worry about connecting with those people. You can if you're like, whoa, maybe there's a chance. But in re reality, probably what's happening is they have someone kind of managing their account, responding to polls on an auto like responder. So I wouldn't worry about some of those people, but everyone else gets a response. So I just put a few examples in here. Like, did you post a poll about whether your followers have tried something before? Like today I did it with food. If they say yes, I can respond and talk to them about why I love it or don't love it. Or I can ask what other things they love. Like I posted, you know, just like these chicken bites or whatever from Sam's and several people responded. I'm like, why didn't I know about this before? You know, they taste just like Chick-fil-A. Um, and it starts conversations with people. Or, um, you know, you can ask for other feedback on things that they give you. And if they're giving you like, you know, for example, baby suggestions for certain items that are must-haves. You can talk to them about that and start conversations with them about like their motherhood journey. And that gives you an automatic like, you know, point of communication to build a relationship. Then I put here, did you post a poll about a group? If you did and someone says yes or interested or send me more info, you know, you have to respond to those people and say, thanks for following along with me and responding about whatever group it may be. I'd love to have you. Is this the best place to share info with you? Some people get really nervous after the yes comes like, yes, I want more info. What do I say next? Like, you know, you talk to them like you talk to a friend like, oh, you want to learn more? Okay, cool. Like, is this the best place to share more information with you? Or if you prefer phone calls or emails as your form of communication, make sure you get the right info from them and keep the conversation going. Like letting it kind of die out or the excitement die out is what you want to avoid. But you have to reach out to all those people that are responding about polls for groups or um, coaching or, you know, anything else, like if you post about Energizer, anything like that. I just want to make sure I didn't skip a slide. Okay. I think I skipped the respond to every comment on your post. So I just want to go back to that really quickly because basically when you respond to comments on your posts, you obviously are like chatting with people that are already communicating with you, but also it boosts your posts in the social media feeds. So if someone comments on your post and you comment back, it looks like more interaction is going on on that post and Facebook or Instagram algorithm says, oh, like this is a hot post, I'm gonna keep showing it. So responding to comments on your post is a really big deal. I think I might've accidentally deleted that slide. So I just wanna say sorry. Um, starting conversations with all story viewers and post likers. This is probably a, like the area where more people are uncomfortable, but I have to say it's gonna be where you like get all those missed opportunities. There will be people watching you that maybe you're nervous to respond to a poll or are those like sideline thinkers. Like, huh, this is kind of interesting. I just don't know. You have to start conversations with these people because this is where the real magic happens. So in stories, I really like to do something like this. Like if I post a progression about a challenge group, say I have like seven slides that are showcasing my upcoming challenge group, or I have like seven or eight slides um, showcasing coaching. And I see people that watch until the end. Most of those people are going to get an invite to that group or to our team from me because I have taken notes saying like, oh, they're interested enough to follow me along to the end. I'm going to invite them to this thing. And I'll just send, send something simple that says like, hey, whatever their name is, you know, thank you for following along with me. I'm so excited about my new challenge group kicking off next week. Can I share more info about it with you? And I picked up this last line from last week's um, national wake up call. And I, I put the call in at the end of this uh, presentation, if you guys didn't get to see it or listen, but she says the moment that you say like, would you be interested in learning more? It gives that person an out and they're less likely to say yes. Whereas she just like always says to them, can I share more with you about it? And the amount of yeses she gets in response to that in comparison are much higher. And I never really thought about that, but I think it's a helpful tip. Like the language that we use makes it you know, it makes a huge difference in the responses that we get. So I just wanted to encourage you 
to maybe think about that and keep it simple. You know, like you don't have to say something life changing to them. You're really like, I always start with a thank you or, um, you know, some way of saying like, I acknowledge that they are supporting me in my journey and I appreciate that. Are you interested too? Is what that girl would say. Don't say. So then you'd say, can I share more info with you about what I'm doing? Or can I share more info with you about this group that I have coming up? Then like that's people that are viewing your stories. And I'll talk to you in a second about how to actually see that in case you don't know. Then post likers, like if you're getting people liking certain posts about topics like challenge groups or your fitness journey or your transformation picks or coaching, and people are liking that post, they don't have to comment. They don't say send me more info. They're liking it. They're saying like, you know, I, li I like this journey you're on kind of thing. I still message them and I'd say, hey, whatever your name is, thank you for showing me love on my post about my fitness progress. I'm so excited to have more ladies joining me in my new group next week. Can I share more info with you about it? We overthink this part of it so much. And we think that just because they like our post that we're being spammy by messaging them. But number one, you're acknowledging them that they're following along with you. You're starting a conversation with them. And then you're saying like, just in case, you know, you've ever considered this too, I'd love to share more info with you. You can always say at the end, like, no worries if you're just showing me support, but I wanted to make sure to keep you involved or I wanted to make sure to keep you posted as to what's coming up. And that's kind of more of like a PB and J invite. Um, and I shared a little bit about that in our business accountability thread because Brittany was asking like, what's the best way to talk to people? And they say with like the PB and J giving them an out is a really great thing at the end. So you can of course add in that out. Like if not, no worries. I just wanted to let you know, I really appreciate you. And I'd love to have you at any point or something, you know, you can put your own touch on it and invite people the way you'd want to be invited. You know, like I just say, keep it really simple like this because I've noticed the more details, the longer it takes to read it, the more I get like non responses or ghosts from it, or just like, you know, straight up no's. Whereas if I keep it really simple and short, it makes them be like, the curiosity is peaked, you know, and they wanna know more. So I think you really should be starting conversations with all story viewers and post likers, especially if it comes to posts or stories that relate to your business. Like if they're following along with you on your social media page and you're talking about your business, they're interested in your business. So talking to them and inviting them isn't spammy. It's just being like, hey, I acknowledge you. I see you following me. Do you want to do this with me too? And then I put here like non-challenge group or coach related posts and stories. How do you talk to these people? I think your goal is to still start conversations with these people. If they're showing your post love or watching your stories consistently, just reach out and start conversations to get to know them better. So I put here a couple conversation starters. Um, one is just like, hey, whatever their name is, thank you for showing me love or thank you for following along. Sorry, there's a typo with my stories. I love sharing about my, you know, whatever some of your interests are, like my, you know, mom life or my whatever, you know, like marathon training or whatever, as well as my fitness journey and business. Are you interested in health and fitness too? Or you can insert a question about them. So the goal is really to start a conversation. You can ask questions that you don't want, I'm sorry, that you do want them to ask you in return to build relationships. They say like the real key to some of these conversations is like, what do you want them to ask you to lead into like knowing more about what it is that you're doing with your business? That's what you want to ask them too. Like, are you into health and fitness? Like, how are you a stay at home mom too? Or, you know, things like that, that kind of help bridge the gap and um, start the conversation and start the relationship. Maybe the invite isn't meant for day one, but as they continue to watch you and show you love, the invite should eventually come. And then I put this in here because I think this is a really helpful tool to use if you're somebody that's like been on social media but you're not really using social media and you've been sharing your journey or maybe you haven't been coaching for a while but you've still been like sharing what you're doing and if you've had followers or post likers or story viewers watching you or liking your posts or watching your stories but you haven't invited them now is your chance and you can say hey whatever their name is i want to thank you for always being so supportive of me and my journey i'm so sorry i've never mentioned this to you before but i'd love to have you join me in my next fitness and nutrition group can i share more with you about it or something along those lines, just being like, hey, I'm sorry I've never asked before. I'm not sure if you'd be, you know, if you'd want more info about this, but I'd love to share more. And using that as a way to kind of start the conversation. Apologies and thank yous. I don't know why, but they go really well with starting conversations about this. And I think they bridge that gap of like awkwardness or feeling super salesy because hopefully you are thankful for them or hopefully you do feel bad that you haven't invited them before, but they're in your life for a reason and they're in your social media for a reason. So they clearly have an interest in what you're doing. So I put here like a few tips on the above. Um, 
you know, we talked about like inviting story viewers and maybe you can't invite every single day, but if you put like a challenge group invite progression out there, you have put like the sale group progression out there, you put um, coaching progression out there and you haven't been able to like address them that day, you can go look at your viewer lists on Instagram within 24 hours, which is a little frustrating now. So they've changed this. Sometimes you can like find one little sneaky slide in your story archive that has like, if it has a number at the bottom, that's your viewer count, but you'll never be able to see like the viewer list. But if that happens to fall on the same day as like a poll you did and you aren't able to see it on that day, sometimes you can get back and you can see who responded to the poll, but you can only actually see the full viewer list within 24 hours. So that means you kind of have to stay on top of your stories, especially when you have posted a poll to make sure you reach everyone who has responded. And to view your viewer list on Instagram, if you look at your profile page, like you literally go on Instagram and you click on your picture, which should be in the bottom right hand corner. And then you see your profile page. There should be three lines at the top and the right. You click on that and archive is an option and archive will show you your story archive. And you can actually see right in there once they load, if it's within 24 hours, you can see the number of followers and the names. If it's beyond that 24 hours, oftentimes you can't see anything. Sometimes though, you can, you can, like I said, you'll see like, let's see. Like if you go back a couple days, you might see like one slide out of say like 15 stories that day that has a little number that shows up at the bottom. If that happens, and sometimes you can kind of like manipulate your way back to a poll that happened that day and see who responded. Now, Facebook viewer lists, you can see your archive of your story viewers over there as well. They stay longer. So I do think there's a lot of benefit to posting to Facebook stories as well. I know it's a pain if you don't have it linked up because you're posting in multiple places, but you'll see you'll get different people watching those stories. So I would post to both if you can um, and track kind of see who's watching on both because it will be, even though you might have the same followers on both um, social media platforms, it will be different people often on Facebook than on Instagram. So it's really helpful because you're getting a whole other set of people to talk to that maybe you wouldn't necessarily connect with on Facebook through the feed. And then to view the viewer list on Facebook, you go to your profile page again, and you'll see on your profile page that you have the option for add story that should show up like really big underneath your bio. To the right of that is a three dot little button you hit that button and you see story archive there. And that's how you get into your story archive. And they're very similar. Like obviously it's the same creator, or, you know, owner now of Facebook and Instagram. But for some reason, those viewer lists on Facebook stay longer. And it takes a little bit longer to load on Facebook usually, I've noticed. Okay, so here are some more tips. The more you direct message people, the more Instagram or Facebook thinks that that person wants to see your posts and stories and they bump you up in the algorithm. What that means is like if you're talking to them via DM, the likelihood that like when you log into Instagram, if you're that other person, that your stories are showing up for them more closely to like, you know, the top of the page. Like you see how it works on Instagram, right? Like it goes left to right as you watch. Um, the more likely you are to come up like in one of their first few on the left. The more you're DMing them on Facebook, same thing with stories, but also posts on both will show up more for those people. So really using direct messenger to talk to people is key because it will help Facebook or Instagram think you two have a relationship, you should be seeing each other's posts. Voice messages and the direct message feature is also a really great way to make your invites personal. I think that that oftentimes is a little more intriguing for certain people because they hear your voice and they're like, oh, She's genuine. She's not just copying, copying and pasting the same invite to me as someone else. Um, the one thing I will say is here is beware. Sometimes the Instagram voice message feature does not allow replays. Like, you know, just Kelly Wise and I were voice messaging like a day or two ago. And she sent me three back. And yesterday I logged in and I could only play the middle one. I couldn't play the first or the third. Today I got her voice message. I still couldn't play those old ones. So sometimes the voice message feature on Instagram doesn't really work. So I wouldn't use that for initial invites just in case they can never get it to play. They don't really know what you're saying to them. I would use it more like when you have a conversation going on Instagram or on Facebook and, you know, an answer requires a little bit more in-depth response or like a little bit more of a personal response 
or like if I've gotten to the point where somebody wants me to share info with them there and I've asked like the questions that I want to ask and I want to send some info about our group or you know a challenge pack or something like that or coaching then I'll start sending a couple voice messages to make it personal I almost always have to follow it up and be like did that play for you though because usually if they don't play it right away it for some reason on Instagram does not work Facebook tends to continue to work I don't know it's interesting that they're kind of run by the same company but they have different little quirks now this is kind of like my ending point here um, you can't wait on people to reach out to you so I feel like this is where people get started in coaching they start posting their like courage has grown they expect people to message them left and right to respond to polls or posts saying they want to join and that's just oftentimes not the way it happens because a lot of times you have to build trust with your audience you have to build actual connections with your audience even if it's people on like Facebook that are friends and family they need to sometimes see you doing this for a while before they will ever jump on board with you so inviting shows up every day on your success club tracker because it should be done every day it doesn't say well, when people respond to your poll saying they're interested, then you invite. It says every single day. And this is the number one way to grow your business. You know, you have to build genuine connections, invite how you would like to be invited and be social. But you have to do it every single day. And sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's people that are like, I really don't know this person that well. Like, it feels weird to reach out. But I promise you guys, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more impact you'll see in your business. I know it's kind of crazy sometimes, like when you get on these national wake-up calls, and I, th I remember there was like a new coach success story about a month ago. And she said she invites like, I think 40 people a day now. It used to be 100. Like that number is not even on my radar. I don't want you guys to hear stuff like that and feel like, you know, freaked out. I'm not even going to do it if I can't do it to that amount. But I do think you have to set a number of like five to 10 a day. If it is your business and you do want to grow and you do want to at least help three people a month to, you know, give yourself enough like, conversations and enough contacts to work from because otherwise if you're just sending one here or there it's really hard to grow actively and to like consistently grow your income with this and to grow your challenge groups with this and ultimately it builds confidence whenever you do start adding to your challenge group so it's kind of like a snowball effect in the positive direction if you are inviting more it gets easier you have more yeses or if you get no's that's great because that's a good follow-up for you for the following month and it starts to become much easier to fill up your groups, to know who to talk to, et cetera. Like the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then I put here like a few recent national wake up calls you can reference with inviting ideas. This guy was today and he has just like a little intro that he sends nearly every person on Instagram about his business and like, you know, does this interest you type thing to build a connection with people. And I think it's really helpful. I tried to voice like record it, but my phone kind of went weird <laughs> on me when I was doing it. So I just thought I'd link the call. And then this is last week's call. This is the one I was telling you about where she says she doesn't use the whole like, would you be interested language? It's just like, can I share more info with you? And her tips I thought were really great on just like basic social media posting and kind of a like a nice summary of what we've been covering over the past few weeks. So this is a call I would definitely go back and listen to. And then the last tip is use the live power hours and the team Beachbody Coach 411 page or the ones offered by Fit and Fierce. Every power hour is usually run by a different coach, usually one who's very successful or has had a lot of success. And they bring like new little nuggets of how other coaches invite and connect. And they're really gold because you're not going to connect with every single one of them. One person's style may not be your style, but chances are you'll find somebody that you listen to the way they run their business each day and they do it in an hour and it connects with you and you're like, I could do that too. And I love some of the inviting language that they share in those. And, you know, not everything's going to work for everybody, but I feel like if you kind of like jump on enough, number one, you're doing the activities yourself, which makes it easier. But number two, you're picking up things or ways that you can personalize it for you. And I think that's really, really helpful. So that was like a quick rundown um, of the basic social media tips. The last thing I would say is if you're kind of getting overwhelmed with like a tracking system or how you do this, one easy way for me, like I haven't done this in a really long time, but if I am like just going to send out a ton of invites tonight or a ton of invites this week, which I would do for a summer sale, like the sale groups, I feel like everybody gets invited to. Like you're liking my post, you're getting invited to my sale. You don't have to be 
somebody special who, you know, share, shows all the love to me. Like, to me, it's like, I've got this awesome sales on this weekend. You are super supportive of me. So you must like health and fitness too. Why don't you check it out so you can see what sort of deals we're going to have. But I would go back like a week on my post and I would look at everybody who liked my post and I would just invite every person who liked that post to our sale group. And that's a really easy way for something like this to start conversations with people, but to also send invites that don't feel weird. You know, like you're not waiting on a yes or no. You can put a link right to the sale group in your invite. Like I'd say something like, hey, thanks for the love on my post. I, you know, I'm really loving whatever program I'm doing. or I'm really loving my challenge group I'm running right now and I'm adding more ladies next week. I've got a sale group going on this weekend where we're gonna share all about the programs and nutrition plans that we have. I'd love to have you. Here's a link if you wanna add yourself or you know, request to be added, hope to see you there. And keep it really simple and it doesn't bother you if they say no, it doesn't bother you if they ghost you for a week, like whatever, it was your sale group, they could either get in on it or they don't, you know? So I think it's like the perfect time to kind of get your feet wet to invite, invite, invite a bunch of people and you don't really have to sit there and wait on a response or feel weird about it. You're just saying, like, I have this really exclusive group with a ton of deals. I'd love it if you check it out. You're always super supportive of me, so I wanted to keep you updated as to what's going on with my groups, you know, whatever. And then the Fit and Fierce um, Power Hour, just to share it, because Carrie's actually doing it tonight at 9, which I know is like right now. Um, I share it, I think, in here a lot, but let me get you the link. And they basically have these power hours every day, 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 9 p.m. A different experienced coach will run it, and they'll tell you exactly what to do for an hour. And honestly, if you're somebody who doesn't really know how, like, how to work the business, I know I say that a lot, um, this is the perfect place to start because you have somebody telling you exactly what to do. And it's just like a little checklist of activities, but they're all in your success club tracker and it keeps you on track and they set timers. So if you're like, I know this is all I have today is this hour. Let me knock it out. It's super helpful for that. Let me just pull the link. Does anybody have any questions? Nope. All right, let me grab this link real quick and then I'll post it. And then um, if anything comes up, you guys can let me know. I'll share the presentation on the team page. So if you want to just pull any of the language out, right out of that, you can. And when this is all said and done, I'll get, like I said, a little checklist together, of like very simple stuff. But for now, I'm just kind of putting the content out there week by week. Well, it's taken a little bit probably because Zoom is running. So what I'll do is just get off the call or end it and then I'll post it in the event if anybody wants to add. Oh, Stacy wants to take a picture. <laughs> of course we should. You guys, yeah, I know. Thank you for reminding me because I would forget. Molly, you look so pretty. I think you're, the, well, Sarah might have makeup on, but you might be the only one on the call with some makeup going on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so rare, but I actually, I had a board meeting, so I had to, you know, look presentable, even though I'm sure the citizens of Chester could give a fuck what I look like, um, you know. I bet they did. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're you like this big, and I, I could tell. I'm like, oh, Molly's you're got probably, it going on. Uh, that's all I was going to say. You're probably the prettiest girl they've seen, for sure. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I needed that. We won't we won't tell anyone in Chester you said that. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you wanna take it, Stacey? Sure. Okay. Y'all ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Since I don't do countdowns on morning workouts, I figured I'd give y'all one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs>